My name is Janty Yates and I'm the costume designer on the film. The thing is, it's a true story. And so, and it's a true story that nobody knows except the whole of Italy and Sicily and Sardinia, etc. Um, and everyone knows about every detail. But now to bring it to a bigger audience is fantastic. I always research the granny out of every project I do. However, Ridley and I always say, well, we were there because <laughs> we're, we're a little older than most of the crew. So we have first-hand experience. However, there was a very, you know, very big amount to research the Italian way of life, the designs of that time. I mean, Italian design was just busting out all over. And uh, we cover that in the film in a huge way. We had a lot of conversation and he always briefs me very thoroughly. He's very, very into costume. He really loves it, which is just, it's such a joy for somebody like me to have someone who actually really cares about the costume. And uh, he didn't want us to go down the Joan Collins Dallas dynasty sort of route. He wanted us to be more Gina Lolla Brigida, slightly earlier, which of course we couldn't do with the profiles, but we could do with that feel for LG. And also the males, he wanted them to be fairly dandy, I think is, is the description. Um, and so that was great fun. I had so much fun designing this film. We were able to do a lot of shapes and a lot of different sizings before we even got to see by Zoom LG, um, which we did four times. And so on the first Zoom, which was Ridley, Janina, myself, and LG, um, I was kind of nervous because she's known for her out there costumes, let's face it. Um, and she said, I want to be like my mother. And her mother's Italian. And I went, that's so great because Ridley doesn't want you to be over the top. You know, that will come with hair and makeup and eyelashes and stuff like that. And uh, <coughs> we, we, kept, we kept the costumes down to a dull roar. He started in the Savoy in London, or he got a job as a bellboy in uh, the Savoy in London. And he noticed, you know, these 18 cases for the rich that he'd be carting up to their suites. So he thought, hmm. And uh, he went back to Italy and he started very small, making small briefcases and overnight bags. And it just literally grew from there. We were very lucky. Gucci Archive opened up for us, which was fabulous. And then we were able to send them to LA and try them on algae and uh, she looked she fit all of them perfectly extraordinarily she looked wonderful and we used a good couple of their uh, outfits and um, i was also able to um, tap into the italian costume houses they had amazing uh, archives and um, two of them torelli and animode had wonderful archives we were buying Lady Gaga has her own amazing archives of costume. Um, it came from everywhere. Patrizia Gucci was not a huge Gucci wearer. She loved Yves Saint Laurent, funnily enough. <laughs> so, and they told me that at the Gucci archives when, on our first visit.
I think one of the most famous women in the world is playing one of the most famous women in Italy. Um, Lady Gaga is playing Patrizia and she is fantastic. She is so good. Um, she was a wonderful collaborator. She's so on it when it comes to fashion. When it comes to gar garments, clothing, costume, we would have fittings and we would fit, normally it's just bish bosh, that fits, you know, sort of thing. But we would do it to the last earring and that would be her look for that particular scene. So Maurizio um, was played by Adam Driver and he was, he's very similar to <laughs> Maurizio in the flesh actually. He was a very classical dresser, always Savile Row, beautiful fabrics, glorious, um, you know, always Gucci ties of course, glorious, um, just lovely, lovely clothes. He was a joy to dress. Al or Aldo was what we would call a dandy. He had big striped shirts that would go horizontal, not vertical even. Um, big ties, check suits. Paolo, who is played by Jared Leto, who was extraordinarily changed by the amazing prosthetics team. And uh, but he was, we were calling Aldo, Al Pacino, a dandy. He was a dandy's dandy. And I was able to get the um, wonderful tailors who made all the suits in The Great Beauty. They made all of um, Jared's suits, uh, bigger checks, bigger stripes, louder shirts, everything a bit clashy, you know, um, but he looked terrific. He really did. And then with this total complete change in hair and makeup and hair and face, really, it was spectacular. Jeremy Irons was just wearing Savile Row suits and Gucci dressing gowns because he was quite ill for the uh, amount of time we filmed him. Not literally, but in the script. My favourite was the bridal dress. It was glorious. It was all hand done. My team were amazing. Dominic Young's team were amazing. They hand sewed all the lace on. It just looked spectacular. Maurizio's suits, we had 45 made. By suits, I mean probably 30 suits and 14, 15 blazers or sports jackets and trousers, tennis wear, everything, you know, we we had, uh, I don't think he had quite as many day appearances in the script. I think he had something like 48. Um, but they always, they were very classic and they were very, um, not subdued because he wears a purple velvet suit in the last couple of scenes. Um, but they were, they were very um, him, very typical Maurizio, quiet, gentle, lovely. We started with his costumes. I made him a pink corduroy suit, which he actually wears at the beginning of the film um, and loved with a Norfolk jacket, which was hilarious. Um, and then when we went to the Sartoria um, Cesare Attolini, they're called, in Naples, and we said we need him to make him a dandy. I mean, they, we were, we were over dandifying him. We were 
dan he was a dandy dandy dan dandy's dandy double dandy um and i was going god ridley's going to kill me with these but in fact he wore them very well he was supposed to be an over the top type of guy and actually if you look at his photo reference he does he can look very subdued but he can wear some quite extreme things Pina Oriema was played by the amazing Salma Hayek and uh, she was hilarious at our first fitting she said no, you don't have anything bad enough you need something far worse than this and she was pulling things off the rail and throwing them on old ladies dresses that you know you see sewing on the street corner in Sardinia you know just old lady stuff it wasn't bad enough for her she was wonderful because I thought oh my god we're not going to nail this at all are we and she was great and she gets very glamorous because Patrizia takes her out shopping so we see the glamour side of her as well Regarding um, Patrizia's fabric selects, we stayed mainly to silk and we stayed mainly to upmarket fabrics because they had all the money in the world and she, could, she would go to um, the Saint Laurent show and she would commission clothes like you hear about and you've never done. You know? <laughs> it's, she, that was her market. So we kept it very haute, as in haute couture, we kept it up in the fabrics. The patterns were very 80s, um, very subtle animal skin prints, but on silk, um, but some beautiful fabrics as well, really beautiful. For Maurizio, um, we, I stayed very close to what I know an Italian gentleman would wear. I've been going to Italy all my life, and so I know they love linen, they love silk, and they love silk and linen, <laughs> and they love cashmere. So it, it was that. His sweaters were cashmere, his coats were cashmere. His, most of his suits were a silk mix or wool and silk. Al Pacino, it was a mixture because I wanted a bigger check or a bigger stripe. So it was where these could be found in the color palette that we had for him, which was kind of a sort of burgundy blue stone. Paolo, I just, I just, we just went mad and had, we had great fun. We went back twice to the Atalinis and redid all his suits and sports jackets because they were too subtle. We went bigger and uh, bolder and more dandy. Camille Cotin, who plays Paola Franchi, we kept her very classic, very beautiful, and very, she has the most wonderful figure, Camille. And so she was a joy to dress. And we kept her very elegant, very, je ne sais quoi, just lovely. Darius and Arthur and I always sit down at the beginning of a film with Ridley and we decide on a colour palette or a colour palette to which we can nearly aspire. Um, and it's very important because you don't want to put Maurizio in a tan suit and he's, Arthur's covered the walls in a tan suede. Can you just see his face? Um, etc. You know, it's very important that uh, that is right at the get go.
So Ridley Scott, just it's the most inspirational, extraordinary artist with so much knowledge and so much experience, obviously now. I feel so privileged to be asked back or to ask to be asked to do a film with him. I just I, I count my blessings. So the first one we did was Gladiator um, back in 99. And uh, since then, he's been very kind to ask me back. I hope they'll be astonished. I hope they'll be fascinated. Um, I hope they'll be amused because it is quite funny. I think they'll be absolutely gobsmacked about the story because who knew? And the acting, LG, her only her second film, pretty good. <laughs>